as well as please don't let the stove go out again <laughs> no dear it's not as if you've got much else to do yes dear It's the middle of the day. I have been to the new factory. We make big improvements with the hinge mechanism, I think. Good show, Hector. Today I hear a rumor that Prescold will have domestic refrigerators on the market in one year. How can I get it into your thick head? I'm not interested in your bloody refrigerators. It's important, Antonio. I must be first on the market. Where have you been? Out. Where are you going? God, is it you? And Tony Ashton, I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, this is too good to be true. Oh, come on, let's sit down and talk. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. I recognised you immediately, but I, your name slipped my mind. Uh, Rose. Oh, Rose, of course. And don't tell me, Mason. No, not anymore. Oh, marry me too, worse luck. God, isn't peacetime dreary? A year ago, this place was stiff with GIs. <laughs> Tony it all seems so long ago. What is it? Six years? Must be. We had some times there, didn't we? It was jolly hard work in that control room. Oh, never mind that. I'm talking about all those gorgeous men. Rex Ballard and Johnny Dawson Smith and... Oh, what's his name? The wing commander couldn't keep his hands to himself. You remember Barry something. Bell? Yes, Barry Bell. Run like hell, it's Barry Bell. God knows what happened to him. Married. To me. Darling, are you serious? You married Barry Bell? Yes, I did. On earth did you pull that off? I don't know. By holding out, I suppose. I just kept saying no. I must have been the only one who did. <laughs> oh, God, sorry, that's an awful thing to say. No, it's all right. I know what Barry's like. Well, I know what Barry was like. So when did all this happen? After Barry got posted to Hornchurch, and we were married in December 1940 during the Blitz. So here you are, happily married. Yes, indeed. And um, he was demobbed in February, and he's a civil servant now, distribution officer, Ministry of Works. How grand. But he's just a clerk, really. You should see him going off to work, Antonia, the great fighter pilot with his briefcase and umbrella. Darling, you all right? Yes. <clears throat> yes, of course. I'd... It's just... Well, these are, these are difficult times for everyone, aren't they? Oh, God, yes. There's bloody shortages. You can't get servants for love nor money. Servants? Who did you marry? A you? <laughs> no, I married Hector. I was in Chelsea and a doodle bug flew over here, so I dived into that shelter near the Five Bells. Well, it went off and I flew into Hector's arms. Oh, how romantic. Well, not really. But I felt terribly safe, snuggled up against his wallet. Well, you must be very happy. 
Well, as long as he keeps his hands to himself and I don't have to see him for more than half an hour a day, it's just about bearable. You are absolutely dreadful, I tell you. Oh, look at the time, darling. I'm sorry, I must rush. Please let's meet again soon. Yes, all right. We talk about our ghastly husbands. Us bored housewives must stick together. at all before. <laughs> well? Princeton have offered me a two-year lectureship. Princeton University is in America, Vic. I should have told you. Yes, you should. But I didn't think for a moment I'd get the job. When do they want you to start? I'll be going at the end of this term, actually. In about four weeks. Is it as soon as that? I hadn't realised. Oh, hey! You lying, conniving, two faced Judas! <laughs> I'll come with you. <laughs> you can't enter. He says. You're married. I leave him. It's an Ivy League university. They're frightfully stuffy. I can't turn up with a married woman in tow. No. I don't suppose you can. You do understand, don't you? Of course I do. I knew you would. Two years in America. Isn't it bloody marvellous? Oh, darling. Terribly happy for you. Coming. Pollock. I beg your pardon. The fish bury its pollock. It's good as do the soil, you see. Yeah. So how did you pass the time today? Well, apart from cooking, scrubbing and ironing, do you mean? I went to the West End, actually. Don't panic. I didn't spend anything. Just window shopping. Window shopping? waste of time. Barry, listen, my my clothes, they're, they're darned and mended to death. I'm embarrassed to go out in them. I don't go to the hairdressers or anything. Look, I'm not made of money, you know. No. I'm going to stretch my legs. Got enough money for beer, then? What? Nothing. What's got into you today? Hmm? Nothing, Barry. I'm hungry. What about dinner? What about it? 
In the kitchen, you have the largest refrigerator in London. I'm without food. I told you before we got married, sweetie, I'm not the kind of girl that cooks. Then we must have servants. But no one will stay under the roof with you more than one day. It's under the same roof, Hector. I do wish you'd learn to speak English. <gasps> Very joyous. And book a table if you're hungry. I would like to eat in my own house sometime. But if I'm such a useless wife, perhaps you should divorce me. Do not start this divorce nonsense again. Oh, face it, Heck. We made a terrible mistake. We're bored rigid with each other. I am not bored with you. Stop it, Heck. You know, I can't stand it when your hands start wandering. It is not wandering. It is a husband who would like normal relations with his wife. Normal relations, that is such a repellent phrase. And I cannot divorce you. I am Catholic, as you know. All right. I'll divorce you. It's not against my religion. All you have to do is give me the grounds. Grounds? What are grounds? A reason, sweetie. All you have to do is pay a woman to spend a night with you in a hotel. That is all I do? Antonia, I'm not the complete chump. I know you. It is not just the wars you want. You want costs and maintenance forever and ever so that you can eat in restaurants and buy expensive clothes. I am a good businessman. I know what is a bad deal. And that is a bad deal. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. Have you been waiting long? No, not oh, at all. Good way. Yeah. Come on, this way. I don't even know where you live. Sort of a uh, Pimlico way. Oh, one of those little terraced houses. Over there, sweet. Oh, I must come and visit you. Oh, please don't. I'd die of shame. Did you tell Barry you bumped into me? No, yeah, actually. Good. Why? Rose, bumping into you is about the best thing that's happened to me in ages. It's an omen. It means things are going to get better from now on for both of us. Come on, let's celebrate. Tea at the Buckingham. It's my treat. The, the, the Buckingham, I can't go to the Buckingham dressed like this. Of course you can. Chin up, Corporal Mason. Best foot forward. Don't look now, darling, but there's a chap over there giving you the eye. But I very much doubt it. Over there, grey pinstripe, Clark gave a moustache. Show him a bit of stocking. See if he comes over. Antonia, he's asleep. Pretending to be, darling. While looking up, you're scared, imagining what he'd like to do to you. Oh, please stop it. You are the absolute limit. <laughs> do you ever have daydreams? Yes, yes, I suppose so. What about? Oh, silly things. Clothes, things like that. What about you? Oh, I daydream all the time. And the best ones, Hector has some sort of fatal accident. Well, it's terrible. Oh, come off it, Rose. Don't tell me you don't daydream about life without good old Barry Bell. No, of course not. You, Rose, were a terrible liar, darling. So what's life like, being married to good old Barry? Well, let's face it, was the casino for a 651 squadron. It's better than it used to be. Still there's a Friday nights there. And what happens Friday nights? Barry's a creature of habit, Antonio. You know, he has his routine for everything. Even picking up girls. Darling, you can't be serious. It's just he doesn't even bother to hide it anymore. Well, why on earth don't you divorce him? Well, I couldn't possibly. It would absolutely kill my parents. Oh no, wait a minute. Your father was a vicar, wasn't he? Yes, that's right. He married us. Be the end of his life if I got a divorce. Sounds like Barry needs a fatal accident as well. See, the trouble with accidents is you never know when they're going to happen. Unless you sort of help them along, I suppose. What are you talking about? Oh, getting rid of our ghastly husbands. Wouldn't it be marvellous? <laughs> Don't look at me like that, darling. I'm not being serious, you know.
Wake up. Had a few after work. It's all right. You don't have to explain. Mm. Weren't you worried about me? What do you mean? Well, I might have had an accident. I'm going to sleep in the spare room tonight, Barry. No, you're not. You're staying here with me. And that's an order. You bloody vicar's daughter. You need. Bringing down a peg or two. Oh, Barry, hurting me. Uh, you thought I'd had an accident, didn't you? <laughs> Go on, say it. I thought, thought you'd had an accident, Al. <laughs> Were you buried? Yes, I was. Liar. You were fast asleep. I could be dead for all you care. I don't know what you want me to say. Don't Barry. say uh, I am a liar. Louder, so the neighbours can hear. I'm a liar. Accident. <laughs> Bloody accident proof, don't you know? Bloody Germans spend the whole war trying to kill me. You don't think I'm going to fall in front of a bus after coming through that lot, do you? Sanctimonious bitch. Did you have a ghastly weekend? Oh, it's Barry. Oh, poor you. Did he have one of his Friday nights? Oh, my God. Rose? The brute? How long has this been going on? It's the first time he's laid a finger on me, I promise. I mean, he shouts and slams doors and that sort of thing, but... Never anything like this before. Rose, the trouble is, once they start, there is no stopping them. Darling, you need a drink. Have you got anything in the house? There's some brandy, left over from Christmas. I hid it. Good girl. There's hope for you yet. Hello? May I speak to Wing Commander Bell, please? I'm afraid the Wing Commander's out. Who is this? This is Mr. Roberts, manager of the London and Middlesex Bank. Am I speaking to Mrs. Bell? Yes, this is Mrs. Bell. Can I help in any way? Uh, yes, I've, I've written to Wing Commander Bell a number of letters over the last month and have yet to receive a reply. I do apologise. I'm afraid my husband's frightfully absent-minded about financial matters, and I'll give him a jolly good talking to. Yeah, I would appreciate it, <laughs> Mrs. Bell. It would help if you'd let me know what the letters are about. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, the Wing Commander and I have no secrets from each other. Well, it's about his overdraft. Uh, that's all I can say at the moment. Thank you so much, Mr. Roberts. Oh, and may I just say, what a terribly attractive voice you have. <laughs> what are you going to think? Oh, Tell me. Oh, who cares? Anyway, it's about Barry's overdraft. He can't have an overdraft. It must be a mistake. Darling, bank managers don't telephone people at home unless it's serious. There, there have been an awful lot of letters recently. Actually, one came this morning. Well, there's one way to find out. We shouldn't be doing this. 
It's wrong. There you are, covered in bruises, and all you're worried about is doing wrong. What is his wrong? It's survival, sweetie. And sometimes you have to play dirty to survive. There. Well, go on. £23, 12 shillings, is it? God! The rotten business man, I could kill him. It will simmer down, darling. I, I don't understand. What's he spending it on? Where does he keep his checkbooks? Uh, in the desk, in the sitting room. Well, come on, then. Which well, locked? Lead on, Macduff. Uh, don't break it. God knows what he'd do if he found out. No, don't worry. I've had plenty of practice on Hector's desks. Really? You break into his desk? Of course. It's not keeping any secrets from me, particularly where money's concerned. Ah. There. Piece of cake. Right. Just leave everything exactly as it is. Bills. Bank statements. Passwords. Oh, darling, look at you, are you sweet? Checkbooks. Telephone. Insurance. Oh, hello, what's this? SP. Eight pounds, eight shillings. Another one there. And again there. Was it? Eight guineas on the first of every month. No wonder he's overdrawn. What on earth is SP? I don't like the look of these. Letters addressed to Barry at his office. SP Stella Paxton. Who's Stella Paxton when she's at home? WAP Sergeant Hornchurch um, in the MT section. I always suspected she and Barry were, you know, as it were. What does the letter say? Um, um, she's asking Barry for some more money because eight guineas a month isn't enough. The child's going to start school soon. Child? Their child. Hello. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Bell. Arnold Smart from the insurance company. Is the wing commander in? No, I'm afraid he won't be back from work for at least an hour. Oh, dear, how very inconvenient. Uh, I normally come on a Thursday to collect the insurance premiums. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. Only due to the urgency of his request, I thought I would try my luck this evening. What request is that? Surrendering his life insurance policy. I've brought the form for him to sign. Uh, you are aware of this request, Mrs. Bell? Yes, of course I am. I, I discuss everything with my husband. It's just that um, I was hoping to have a word with him. You see, you would be sacrificing a lot for the short-term gain, and you would only get a fraction of the £5,000 due on maturity, and nothing at all should, God forbid, something happen to the wing commander. Yes. Perhaps we ought to reconsider. That would be my recommendation, Mrs. Bell. Shall I pop back on Thursday as usual? Yes, please, Mr. Smart. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Mrs. Bell. Yeah. 
Evet. Ama... Ya. Ben ağa thank you. Thank you. What about a kiss from my loving wife? Very please, not that. Uh, if that's your attitude, I may as well go out. Very. Is there something you want to tell me? What are you talking about? Uh, it really doesn't matter. You're trying to be funny. No. Right, what about supper? Oh, bugger supper! Half a dozen red roses, and he thought he could take me there and then on the kitchen table. Sounds absolutely ghastly, darling. And the insurance man's coming on Thursday. Oh, darling, it's a lucky day. Antonio, would you please be serious just for a moment? Sorry, darling, I'm all ears. What happens Thursday? Barry is going to surrender his life insurance policy for a pittance. I don't suppose you'll see any of it. Exactly. Stella Paxton will get what little money we have left. And I'll have to live my life out in poverty. Unless... Unless what? Unless Barry has an accident. The trouble is, darling, there's more chance of someone having an accident. If they take risks. Does Barry take risks? Like what? Oh, you know, mountain climbing, big game hunting. Don't tease Antonia. Well, what does he do then? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Goes to work, comes back from work, goes to the pub, picks up girls on a Friday night. That's the sum total of Barry's existence, really. Well, not much scope there, sweetie. The most dangerous thing Barry does, according to him, is the journey to and from work. What do you mean? Well, apparently the platform at South Kensington Underground Station gets terribly crowded in the rush hour. Well, he says he doesn't understand why there aren't more accidents. How absolutely fascinating, darling. <laughs> Tacky. <laughs> Lovely. You can keep them. And I bought you a present. <gasps> oh, Antonia, I don't believe it. Nylon, where did you get them? Oh, I have my waist petal. <laughs> well, I've got nothing to wear them with. That's what you're supposed to wear them with, nothing. Oh, thank you. I'll have to hide them. The balloon will go up if Barry thinks I've been buying nylons. Or perhaps you won't have to hide them too long. We're friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Then we've got to help each other, sweetie. Because nobody else will. Believe me. Least of all our wretched husbands. Yes, you're right. Good. Tell me about Barry's journey to work. It's the same every day, is it? Yes. Same routine every day. Like I said, Barry's a creature of habit. Tell me what this routine is. Every detail. Well, he leaves the house at ten to eight, having had a jolly good moan at me about some domestic detail or other. For God's sake, Rose, keep an eye on the stove, will you please? Let it go out twice this week. Sorry, dear. It's not much to ask. Yes, Barry. They set off down Oldfield Gardens, left wheel in St George's Drive, then it's quick march to Victoria. He gets the district line, South Kensington. Rubbing shoulders with the great unwashed, he calls it. He gets.
cuts on near the front of the train, so he's near the Piccadilly line exit when he gets off. Those moans about the crush. God help anyone who gets in his way. When he gets to the Piccadilly line platform at South Kensington, he always stands in the same place. It's so crowded, there's no chance of getting the first train. And anyway, Barry likes to get a seat. journey to work. Couldn't be duller, could it? Mrs Bell? Yes? We've come about the roof. I beg your pardon? Your telephones. About your gutters, Mrs Bell. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry. I think there must be some mistake. Hello? Are you alone? Yes, of course I am. How are you? Did they come about the roof? What? Well, the workmen, darling. It's just to make sure someone saw you at home. Uh, I sent them away. Just say there was a mix-up about the dates if anyone asks. Asks about what? And darling, for God's sake, try and look surprised when they break the news. Antonio, what's going on? Best not talk for a couple of days. I'll ring you. <laughs> Um, Detective Sergeant Painter, are you the wife of Wing Commander Barry Bell? Yes, I am. I'm afraid I've got some very bad news, Mrs Bell. Ready, Mrs. Bell. Is, 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 is he? Is his face? Oh, unmarked, Mrs. Bell. You needn't worry on that account. Oh. Yes, yes, that's my husband. That's, that's when Commander Bell. As your husband wouldn't have suffered, Mrs. Bell. What was that? His death would have been instantaneous. Oh, I am glad. I, I mean, I mean, I am so glad that he didn't suffer. That's right, my dear. Don't cry. 
It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Turkish, eh? Don't see that much these days. It is. Um, a friend gave them to me, actually. Stay at home this morning, did you, Mrs. Bell? After your husband left for work? Yes, yes, I did. On your own, I suppose. Oh, yes. Let's see. Apart from the workman, that is. Workman? They came about the roof. What time was that, Mrs. Bell? It was about half past eight. I see. Drafty. Come here, lover. Well, for Pete's sake, Antonio, let me have a breather. Oh, I mean, like you shouldn't need a breather. Some of us have to work, you know. After your last visit, I fell asleep during a physics lecture. Everybody falls asleep during lectures. Not when they're giving them. <laughs> So will you marry me? What? It's not the kind of reaction a girl expects when she proposes. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just a bit out of the blue, darling. <laughs> I thought there was no chance of Hector letting you go. What if there was a chance? Well, of course. Like a shot. Only... Only... Antonia, university lecturers get paid practically nothing. Let's face it. You are used to living rather well. You don't need to worry about money, darling, because we're going to have lots. Now, come here. You've had your breather. <laughs> Hello, Mr. There will be a post-mortem, of course, and, uh, and an inquest. You'll receive notification from the coroner's office. Yes, thank you. Do you have family and friends, Mrs. Bell? I'm oh, sorry? To keep you company. Yeah. Best not to be on your own at a time like this. Yes, of course. Yes, I do. Perhaps your nice friend with the Turkish cigarettes. Yes, and thank you for your help, Sergeant. Goodbye. Good evening, Mrs. Bell. Is Wing Commander Bell at home? No. Oh dear, how very inconvenient. He's dead. I beg your pardon? My husband's dead. But this is terrible news, Mrs. Bell. Yes, he... He died in an accident on his way to work this morning. A road accident? At the underground station. He fell off the platform. Dear, oh dear. May I ask... Which station? South Kensington, the Piccadilly line. Ah, yes. Eastbound, I expect. Horribly crowded in the rush hour. My sincerest condolences to you, Mrs. Bell. Thank you. The insurance company will, of course, fulfil its obligations, uh, subject to the coroner's inquest. Of course. In some cases, we ask our own investigators to look into things. Investigators? But I'm sure that won't be necessary in this case. Although I must say, it is quite a coincidence. I'm sorry, what do you mean? That your husband should meet his tragic end on the very day he intended to surrender his life insurance policy. 
Well, he changed his mind about that on your advice, as it happens. Well, that's as may be. A very sad day indeed. I must say, I always found the Wing Commander very pleasant to deal with. Yes. Very sad indeed. Yes? Who's that? No one. They hang up. Where are you going? For a walk. A walk? I need some fresh air. Fresh air? A walk? These are two things you hate most in the world. First time for everything, heck. Be careful. You will get a terrible shock in the system. A shock to the system. You ridiculous foreign man. Hello? Darling, it's me. Did you ring? Yes, yes, I did. Not to, you silly girl. I know, but... Look, I had to talk to you. I had to find out if everything was all right. Of course everything's all right. What do you want about? This, this awful policeman came around. He was so suspicious. And then the insurance man started making these vile insinuations. Shh, shh, shh. Now listen to me, you chump. You haven't done anything wrong. Your husband was killed in a horrible accident. You were at home dusting and scrubbing like a good girl, so stop worrying. Have you told your parents? No, no, I haven't yet. Tell them, for heaven's sake. Pull your socks up, woman. Buy something black. Write to Stella Paxton. Tell her where to get off. That should cheer you up. When's the inquest? They're going to let me know. Antonia, I'm really dreading it. Whatever for? You're the grieving woody. Just make sure you look tragic, darling. My turn next. What do you mean? Do you regularly take the same journey from South Kensington? Yes, same time every day. And you take up the same position on the platform every day? That's correct. So you had seen Wing Commander Bell before? I didn't know the gentleman personally, but I saw him on the platform most days. We generally got into the same carriage. He was always some... How can I put this? He was always very eager to be first onto the train in order to get a seat, you see. And did you see the young lady who was allegedly standing behind Wing Commander Bell? No, I didn't. The chap in the grey trilby was standing very close to the edge. And he stuck his elbow in my ribs just before the train came in. Did you see the young lady who was observed standing behind Wing Commander Bell? No, I didn't. I heard a woman say, get help or something, and then everyone was screaming and shouting. Wing Commander Bell was a distribution officer in my department of the Ministry of Works. He'd been working there for a year. Was he a satisfactory employee? Generally, yes. Well, I had occasion to speak to him recently. About what? Nothing serious. A couple of minor mistakes. Wing Commander Bell seemed distracted. Was he unhappy with his job? No, he seemed quite content in his work. I got the impression that the source of Wing Commander Bell's dissatisfaction was more domestic. Thank you, uh, Mr. Winstanley. Uh, call the next witness, please. Always, Bell. Rose Bell. Mrs. Bell, uh, how would you describe your husband's state of mind on the morning of the accident? Uh, well, he was the same as ever, really. Could you be more specific, Mrs. Bell, about his mood? Um, well, he, he, was, he was very cheerful. 
Uh, and how would you describe his state of mind over the last few months? The state of mind is, is excellent. We've heard evidence that suggests your husband was liable to fits of depression, Mrs. Bell. Uh, do you agree with that? No, I do not. My husband was a cheerful and outgoing man. He had everything to live for. Thank you, Mrs. Bell. Uh, that would be all. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before I ask you to reach a verdict on the cause of Wing Commander Bell's death, let us review the evidence. Have you reached a verdict? We have, sir. We believe Wing Commander Bell's death to have been accidental. You must be very relieved, Mrs. Bell. Relieved? What, what do you mean? You must be relieved that the inquest is over. Oh, uh, I see. Yes, yes, I am. I wonder if we'll ever find her. Find who? A mysterious young lady on the platform. Well, I really wouldn't know. A criminal investigation is still possible, you know, should any new evidence come to light. So, cherchez la femme, as the French say. Hey, Mrs. Bell? Look, would you excuse me? I want to go home. It's me, darling. What news? Accidental. Oh, darling. Oh, that's wonderful. Well done. Now, what happens next? Um, I've got to go to the registrar tomorrow, pick up the death certificate. Now, that sounds interesting. Why did I keep you company? It's fine, Antonia. I can manage. Oh, nonsense. You need moral support. And anyway, this is where you do your bit for me. Remember what to do? I wish you'd tell me what's going on. Not in. Are you all right, dear? Who is the informant? She is. Mrs. Bell. She lost her husband in a tragic accident. Full name of the deceased, please. Um, Barry Cuthbert Bell. <coughs> <coughs> Barry Cuthbert Bell, D DFC, Wing Commander retired. Uh, occupation? Civil servant. Uh, I'm awfully sorry. I, I, really, I, I really don't feel very well. I need to go to the ladies. Through the corridor, down the stairs, third door on the right, second door on the left. I did. Would you show me? I'm sure I'll never find it. Oh, yeah. oh yes, do be an angel. I've got no sense of direction whatsoever. Come along, then. Thank you. You're so kind. Bell is frightfully upset, you know. Really? Her husband was a war hero. I see. He was life and limb for the likes of you, so you at least show a little respect. If you can't be civil, I shall have to ask you to leave my office. Oh, put a sock in it, you stuck-up cow! Darling, are you feeling any better? <laughs> you were brilliant! Yes, what was it all in aid of? What is it? Like death certificate. Never know when something like that might come in handy. Did you steal it? Don't worry, I took it from the bottom of the bat. We're a good team, aren't we? Come on, let's have a lovely drink to celebrate. Barry isn't even buried yet. It's hardly the time to celebrate, Antonia. Sweetie, it's the perfect time to celebrate. Come on, I've got a bottle of champagne in the car and there's someone I want you to meet. <laughs> Cut 
but Barry kept that quiet, didn't he? <laughs> I almost died. Sleeping at this time of day. Really. What a naughty boy you are. I tell you, it might have warned me you were coming round. I could have tidied up. <laughs> we don't mind, do we, Rose? Vic, this is Rose, my oldest and best friend. Rose, this is Vic. How do you do? Now find some glasses and go and open that. Clean glasses, Vic. Uh, not for me, thank you. Oh, nonsense. A bit of bubbly will perk you up no end. Off you go, Vic. Jump, jump. What do you think of Vic? Isn't he divine? Who is Vic exactly? He is the dishiest man in London, that's who. Couldn't you just eat him up? Look, I really ought to go home. Mm. Do cheer up, sweetie. We pulled it off, haven't we? Rose and I were just agreeing you are the dishiest man in London. No, I wasn't. Well, sorry, I mean, obviously. Don't worry. I know what a tea she is. And Vic's not just a pretty face, you know. He's a lecturer at the Imperial College. Oh, what do you teach? Physics. Oh, interesting. Oh! <laughs> Don't be silly, it's not the least bit interesting. But he loves jazz and cubism and French films, thank God. And best of all, he's a bit of an athlete, aren't you, lover? So, what have you two been up to? Well, actually, my husband, unfortunately... Rose and I have been up to no good. We're partners in crime. Do shut up, Antonia. You should be careful. She's a bad influence. Nonsense. I'm a very good influence. I've just helped Rose out of a frightful jam, and she's about to do the same for me. Aren't you, Petal? Well, that's what friends are for. Yes. Here's to friends. To friends. To friends. Isn't Vic heaven? Seems very nice. And he completely adores me. Oh, the pet. Are you and Vic Uno? Lovers. <laughs> of course we are. Hey, don't start getting ideas about Vic. He's spoken for, you know. Oh, good Lord, I didn't mean that. Well, now you've met the man in my life. You might as well meet my ghastly husband. Oh, not now, Antonio, please. Well, you've got to, darling. Then you'll see what a frightful jam I really am in. Don't make things here, sweetie. Hey! Guys yeah, had a business lunch. He's probably sleeping it off somewhere. Don't tell me that's a refrigerator. Yes, it's one of Hector's bloody creations. <gasps> I've never seen anything like it. You like? Ah, there you are. Rose, this funny little man is my husband, Heck. Heck, this is my friend, Rose. Pleased to meet you, Rose. How do you do? My own design. On the market next year. If you like, I put you top of the list. Special deal. You're very kind. It would never fit in my house, unfortunately. I, I also make um, high-powered vacuum cleaners on the washing machines. Stop badgering the poor girl. She just lost her husband in a frightful accident. She doesn't want to talk about washing machines. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. What happened? He fell off the platform on the underground. Ah. Uh. 630 volts. See the way his mind works? Actually, it, it wasn't the electricity, it was the force. Darling, don't. It's too morbid for words. Heck, take Rose into the sitting room, be nice. Don't talk about work. I don't mind you talking about work. Sounds very interesting. Antonia gets very impatient when I talk about my work. Then I go to America and make automobiles. Then, then, then I design a carburetor. I make lots of carburetors. Then I come to England and make carburetors for aeroplanes. Oh. I have a factory. Then there is war. Then everyone wants carburetors for aeroplanes. Then I have lots of factories. Oh, for crying out loud, Hector, there's poor race in black and you're talking about carburetors. I don't mind, really. It's fascinating. There's no need to be polite, sweetie. Heck. Do something useful. Hand out the biscuits. I say it must be wonderful to be good at something. You are good at many things, I bet. You can cook and sew and all those wifey things I'm useless at. 
Coffee and biscuits. That is the only cooking my wife does. I suppose it's Reggiori's for dinner again tonight? I know. Why don't we take Rose? Excellent idea. Uh, thank you. You're, no, you're very kind, but I'm really not ready for that sort of thing just yet. Whenever you feel it is appropriate, my dear. And now, I must do some work before dinner. A pleasure to have met you. I had no idea Antonia had such a charming friend. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> well, sweetie. Well, you certainly made an impression there. I've never seen him so frisky. Seems nice. It's all right for you. You're not married to him. Now, about the funeral. I don't think I'll come unless you really want me to. Oh, good God, no. Um, no, I, you know, I, I think that it's probably best if you don't. Burial or cremation? Burial. <gasps> I'm going to have Hector cremated. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. The wing commander will be much missed in the office, Mrs. Bell. Wonderful sense of humour, marvellous stories, and yet, how can one put it, a, a real gentleman. Yes. But, uh, thank you so much. You're very kind. Thank you. Gentlemen. Ah, Rose, we were just talking about good old Barry. Were you? I was saying, good old Barry was indestructible. Talk about luck of the devil. You just knew he was always coming back. Kite sopped to pieces more often than not. Smoke billowing and Barry there with that silly grin plastered across his face. He was a good lad, was Barry. He falls off a ruddy platform on the Piccadilly line. I couldn't believe it when I heard. I, I say steady on, There's chap. something odd about this, I said. Barry Bell coming a cropper on the underground. Something fishy about this, I said, didn't I, Peter? Oh, uh, excuse me, sorry. Yes, hello. It's me, darling. Is the party going with a swing? Yes, yes, it was a, a very moving service. I bet all those raft types are getting tight. Has anyone made a pass at you yet? Well, Barry had so many good friends. Anyway, darling, we've got to sort out my little problem. Let's meet so uh, I can tell you my plan. Thank you so much for ringing. And it's got to happen soon because Hector's driving me mad. He's got to go, I'm afraid. Are you listening, Petal? Goodbye. Rhodes, are you unwell? No, I, I'm fine. Thank you, Daddy. You've gone awfully pale, dear. Well, I, I'm terribly upset. Obviously. I know, dear, but you must be brave. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. What a lovely thought. Thank you, Daddy. So, how are you coping? Mrs. Bell. Quite well. Thank you. Had the roof done yet? I'm sorry? The morning of your husband's accident, didn't some men come round to work on the roof? Uh, yes, yes, they came on the wrong day. <laughs> or the right day, depending on how you look at it. What do you mean? Well, they helped our investigators establish your whereabouts that morning, Mrs. Bell. Anyway, they're satisfied, as was the coroner and his jury. So, here's your cheque for £5,000, Mrs. Bell. Piece of cake? No, thank you. If you would just sign this receipt for me, Mrs. Bell, just here. So you're coping, are you? 
You just asked me that. Managing to get any sleep? What on earth do you mean? I'm merely inquiring after your health, Mrs. Bell. Mr. Smart, I wonder what your superiors would think if they knew you were making improper suggestions to young widows. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Smart. Answer your phone. Antonio. Anyone would think you were trying to avoid me. I've been terribly busy. It's a brilliant plan, darling, even though I say so myself. I could be tucked up in bed, not a scratch on him, and it'll look just as if he died in his sleep. Antonio, the, listen no, to don't me. interrupt, sweetie. I'm getting to the good bit. Then we fill in the blank death certificate saying he died of coronary thrombosis or whatever. We'll look up the proper words. Then we take him to the undertakers, just like he did with good old Barry. And Bob's your uncle. Mission accomplished. I can't. Look, you probably won't have to do anything, sweetie. I'm, I'm stronger than heck. God knows I've had enough practice fighting him off. It's just he's a tenacious little bugger, so I need you there just in case. No. I can't do it. It's wrong. Oh, don't stop that again. Look, we're in this together, Petal. You like it or not. We've steamed open envelopes, broken into desks, stolen blank death certificates and conspire to shove good old Barry under a train. That was different. Barry was a cheat. And a, and a, and a bully. And a liar. Hector isn't... H Hector's <sighs> nice. Oh, come off it. And he loves you. I know he does. Look, getting rid of Barry, that was... That was survival. You said so yourself. But getting rid of Hector, what so you can be with Vic, that is just... And Tony, that is just selfishness. Separation. <laughs> You're right, of course. I never used to believe in all that nonsense about love. Only good for sentimental songs. So I married Hector for the money. And then Vic came along and ruined it all. And now I'm in total and utter sweetie. And every minute I'm not with him is torture. And if I can't have him, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather just throw myself into the nearest swanny. I'm so sorry. I just, I suppose there could be a, there could be another way. Really? Well, Hector would never divorce me, but I could divorce Hector. If he was unfaithful and I caught him. Do you mean with me? Well, it's either that, darling, or it's the blank death certificate. Otherwise, I shan't be responsible for my actions because I'm totally and utterly at the end of my tether. Well, I suppose... Thank you, darling. But what if he doesn't like me? I like you? Darling, he was positively drooling over you. Please don't exaggerate. Oh, you really will do it, Petal. I'll try. By the way, I bring glad tidings. What's that? I'm coming to stay with you. Really? 
How long for? What? Two, three days. However long it takes. However long what takes? Never you mind. How are you going to swing that? Officially, I'm going to Manchester. Poor Mars, not well. What are you up to, Antonio? Nothing, darling. I would just think. All night together, maybe two. Be good practice. For what? For when we get married, silly. Oh, yes. You did sound a little more enthusiastic. I can't wait. You're not going off me, are you, lover? Don't be silly. Prove it. Maybe your friend Rose has decided not to come. She'll be here, don't you worry. Taking quite a shine to little Rosie, haven't you, my sweet? I think she is a very pleasant young lady. She couldn't stop talking about how charming and interesting you were. Really? Got quite jealous, actually. Ah, speak of the devil. So sorry I'm late. Oh, darling, you look lovely. Oh, doesn't she look lovely, heck? Yes, uh, very lovely. Is it good? Mmm, delicious. Damn, Hector, I forgot to tell you. I might have to go to Manchester for a couple of days. Well, why? Mummy's ill, or so she says. She'll back up as soon as I get there, but still, I've got to do my bit. I don't suppose you could come up for a couple of days, could you, heck? You know I can't. There is the new factory. Well, you'll just have to fend for yourself for a couple of days, then. We won't eat in restaurants alone, so it'll be bread and cheese every evening. Eating and drinking should be done in company. Perhaps I could cook for you. You? Cook for me? What a good idea. Oh, she's a marvellous cook, heck. Ah, but can she cook goulash? Oh, yes, if I've got the right ingredients. Oh, don't worry about that. I know a little man, and I don't mean heck. You would do this for me, Rose? Really? Yes, I'd love to. Excellent! Dinner in my own house for once. We shall have such good fun. something sensible. So I got you this. It's gorgeous. Well, at least you're wearing nylons. What else have you got under there? What? Oh, the usual. Same thing you wore during the Blitz, knowing you. Well, better have a rummage through these. Oh, God, look at the time. Better go down to the kitchen. The meat's in here. The rest of the stuff you want is on the table. Golly, mostly a paprika. Yeah, well, I had to practically sell my body for that little lot, so it better be a bloody good stew. Now, you'll have to find the utensils yourself. I haven't the faintest idea where anything is. Oh, now, darling, you've got to get him into bed. Do you understand that? Yes, of course. No, no, I mean literally upstairs, into bed. It's a legal thing, apparently. Better for the divorce courts or something. Shouldn't there be someone else, sort of like a witness or something? Don't fret, sweetie, leave it all to me. I'll be outside, you turn the bedroom light on, and I'll know. Got it? Yes. Now, how long does this damn goulash take? Oh, about, about two and a half hours. Oh, God, the tedium of cooking. Oh, you better get cracking, darling. Hector will be here at seven. Good luck. Chocks away. Let us pray.
there you are. There are wonderful smells coming from the kitchen. Rose? Is that really you? Hey, Hector. My dear, I, I hardly recognized you. I thought a film star had wandered into my house. <laughs> um, right, well, dinner's nearly ready. Why don't you open some wine? I think a claret would be best with goulash, don't you? Claret? Of course. I have claret. Mmm. Delicious. The best goulash I've had for years. I'm glad you like it. Your husband, God rest his soul, must have enjoyed your cooking very much. Actually, you never even noticed. Give up trying in the end. Life is full of cruel tricks. What do you mean? I love to eat. I marry a woman that hates to cook. You love to cook. You marry a man that does not care for eating. We humans are mad. We do everything we can not to be happy. Yes, we do, don't we? But you, you, you will marry again and be very happy, I think. Oh, I don't think so. Yes, of course. You are a beautiful young woman. No, no, no. Oh, yes. Very beautiful. And I think you are a good person, too. No, I'm not. No? So you are a bad person? Yes. Very bad. Well, everybody should be a little bit bad, I think. Perhaps you're right. You know what I think? I think if it had been you that day in Chelsea, if you had run into the air raid shelter and grabbed hold of me and not Antonia, perhaps things might have been better for both of us. I'm embarrassing. No. No, it... No, I think you're very sweet. Rose? Yes, Hector? There is something I want to say to you. What is it you wanted to say to me, Hector? I... I... Shouldn't, shouldn't we... shouldn't we go upstairs? No, no. It's good here with my refrigerator. <laughs> you do like me, don't you, Ross? Yes, yes, I do, Hector. I do. It would be more comfortable in a bed. No, my darling. I must have you here. No. Yes, yes, all right. All right. Sweetie, that I was going to wait around for months while Hector drives me through some humiliating public divorce while Vixen America surrounded by all those milk fed yak girls with their perfect teeth. You can't do this. You were supposed to get him into bed. Stop it. You mustn't do this. Hector is a good man. I'm not going to let you do this to him. Yes, you are, sweetie. <gasps> You're going to help me take him upstairs. 
Oh. Into his pyjamas. We'll tuck him into bed and we'll hold a pillow over his face until he stops breathing. I'll fill out a death certificate and in the morning we'll get the undertakers to arrange to take him away. I won't, I won't do it. I won't. Look, I'm not letting you out of my sight until you finish our job, sweetie. Completely and utterly bad. Stay where you are, young lady. <laughs> Silly buckets! There seems to be the trouble, miss. So you couldn't find your friend's house? Well, I must have got the, the wrong address. So I thought I'd go home. And I was walking to the underground station. It was very dark, and I thought someone was following me. You described them? Mm, well, no, no, because then, then I fainted. You fainted? Yes, well, so what about that? I faint a lot. My husband died in an accident a month ago. Your husband? Yes. You girls do come up with some stories, don't you? What do you mean by that? Just tell me what happened after you fainted. Right, when I came to, my coat was gone and my handbag, and I was very frightened, and I, I, I ran for help. That's when I ran into you. All right, young lady. Since you've been roughed up, and I'm in a good mood, we'll leave it at that. I'll have a word with the duty sergeant, see if I can take you home. Thank you. I've got the right one in there, sir. It's been roughed up a bit. Where'd you find her? Uh, Park Street. The dress was all torn. She's on a game. Oh, I reckon so, too. Right, my love? Hey, you've been in the wars. You sure you're all right? Mm. You should get yourself a proper job and keep off the streets. Sir? And you wouldn't get into these scrapes. Look at my office. Um, my key was in my handbag. Ah, don't worry, there's not many locks I can't open. Darling, it's you. You know this lady? Of course I do. I've been worried sick about you, darling. What on earth happened? Well, your friends had a bit of an adventure, madam. I'm not going there. Please don't leave me with her. Please. Well, you can't come with me, love. I'm afraid she hasn't been very well recently. Oh, well, you stay with your friend. She'll look after you. <laughs> oh, stop cringing, woman. I'm not going to hurt you. How's Hector? A little day of pass since you asked. What do you mean? He's dead, actually, and I can't get him up the stairs on my own. Got any of that brandy left? I'll make us a nice drink. You go upstairs and make yourself look a bit more presentable. If you want to run away, by all means do. But don't forget my poor dead husband back at Park Crescent. With your handbag, your clothes and your fingerprints over everything, including him. How about a nice cold drink? Oh my God, Antonio! How could you? Well, I had to put him somewhere, darling, in case you came back with a policeman. Oh. Poor Hector. Oh, don't get weepy on me. <sighs> looks a bit blue around the gills, doesn't he? Oh, he's stiff as a board. Probably frozen. Maybe it's through the waters. Really? It's the sort of thing Hector would have known. Come on. It's going to get light soon. Better get him up there somehow.
Typical. He's a bloody nuisance even when he's dead. Never had to work so hard to get a man into bed. I say, Antonio, that, that bump on his head's huge. What if the undertakers notice? Oh, what if they do? As far as they're concerned, it's all above board. Anyway, once he's been cremated, they can't do post-mortem on a jar of ashes, can they? There you go. What do you think? <sighs> it looks as if he's trying to run away. A bit late now. Tragic that your husband should be taken so young. Massive heart attack, the doctor said. My poor dear Hector. And you live at Park Crescent? I know it well. I shall have him conveyed to our chapel of rest here within the hour. Thank you so much, Mr. Greeley. I assume there won't be an inquest, so we can proceed with the arrangements immediately, though I quite understand if you don't wish to discuss the details just yet. I, I want to settle it now, please. Very well. My husband wished his remains to be cremated. He was adamant. Of course. But there are some forms that must be completed. I'll do it now. No, not by you. Form A is a declaration that has to be made in front of a justice of the peace. Form B must be filled in by the doctor who certified the death and form C by another doctor. But this is ridiculous. This is bureaucracy gone mad. All I want is my poor dear husband to be late to rest. Of course, but I'm afraid cremation is a rather complicated business. Is burial less complicated? Much less. Then I'll have him buried. Mm, but I thought you said he wanted... My husband would have wanted whatever's most convenient. Whatever Madam wishes. Well, I shan't be needing the death certificate, but I shall be needing the disposal certificate. The what? The disposal certificate. It would have been dealt with by the registrar. I think you must have left it at home, dear. That's probably what it is. Here's what I suggest. I'll drive over to Park Crescent with a colleague. You ladies can be looking for the disposal certificate and we'll prepare the deceased for removal. You do no such thing. I don't want you going anywhere near him. I came here expecting sympathy and understanding. And you just talk about disposal as if my poor dear husband was a piece of rubbish. I shall take my customer elsewhere. You might have warned me. What about? This bloody disposal bump. I mean, presumably poor old Barry had to have one. Well, there were hundreds of forms. I didn't bother to look. How do we get one? Well, from the registrar. That means reporting the death, which means getting a doctor to look at him. And he's been dead this part of a day. How about some gin-soaked quack we could make eyes at? Do you know one? No. Yeah. Well, anyway, even if you did, you still have to report it to the coroner. Buckeration!
I tell you what we do. Cut out the middleman. What do you mean? Undertakers. All that red tape. Glenn, you trip us up. We'll just have to dispose of poor old Hector ourselves. Do you mean dig a grave? I don't think digging's our sort of thing, do you, sweetie? See, it's a pity the war's over. An air raid would be handy. What about a bomb site? Where? Well, the one opposite my house got hit by a doodle bug, uncovered an old well. Boy fell down, it took them all day to get him out. Sounds promising. Yes. They're going to bulldoze it soon. Even better. I went to bed with Barry, you know. Assumed you had. It's rather beastly, actually. I know. And very brief. Yes. I was always rather grateful for that. Somewhere? Manchester, to be consoled by my dear Mama. Better change my shoes. Can't clamber around the bomb site in high heels. No, darling. Just wait in the car. I know things have been difficult, and I'm sorry if I've been a bit bossy at times. But you've been such a help. You've been marvellous. And I'm really grateful. Well, what are friends for? Right there.
से थे कम कम उदय See you in another life. Did you miss everything? All right. Yes, thank you. you. Shouldn't be in there. It's dangerous. Um, I, I lost my dog. Your dog? Yes, poor little thing. It ran into the bomb site. Disappeared. Would you like me to go and have a look for him? I've got a torch. No, no, no. Don't worry. It happened a week ago. I was visiting a friend of mine. Yes, I've seen this car parked here before. Yes. Do you know? Whenever I pass, I just stop and call his name. It's silly, I know. I'll keep my eyes open for him. Thank you. Very sweet. Everything all right, madam? Ah, uh, I, th I thought I'd lost my ticket. I'm going on a trip, you see. I hope you enjoy it, madam. Don't worry, darling. I will. Good night. While tonight's story is reminiscent of Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train, it was actually based on a 1989 novel called On the Edge by Peter Lovesey. Lovesey was a boy in London during World War II. During the Blitz, he was sent to live with a family in Cornwall. His memory of the war and its grim aftermath provided the inspiration for tonight's story. Lovesey didn't set out to be a writer. He was a teacher when he first noticed a writing competition being advertised in the Times. He sat down, wrote a book, and won first prize.
The rest, as they say, is mystery history. Despite churning out 30 novels in 30 years, Lovesy calls himself a slow writer. He manages a page a day, perfecting each sentence before moving on to the next. He always works out the plot in advance, down to the last harrowing detail. This way, he faces no untoward surprises at the end. Poor Antonia. If only she'd been as prudent. I'm Diana Rigg. Good night. Uncover our website at PBS Online. www.pbs.org.